Shalom family. So bear with me. There's a, I thought I'd address this. This video might be a bit long because I want to read you a, a proper document with a lot of good arguments in it. And, and you can use this video and refer back to it. So if you turn with me to 2 Thess Thessalonians 2 verse 3. It says, let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come the great day of the Lord, right? Except they come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now, the way most people are arguing at the moment and describing this exact verse is they're saying that we will see the Antichrist. We'll see him sign the seven-year treaty and reveal himself. And then, you know, that day will come. The great day. They say the rapture can't occur before this happens. But, but, translation, Greek. I'm going to drill into the Greek here. Now, if you look at it, it's apostasia, 646 Strong's number, right? A defection or a revolt is the, the angle they take here. Now, apostasia here is also, it means to leave or depart. It's derived from apo, away from, and histemi, stand. Properly, a departure, leaving from where we were standing, which could 100%, and I believe this is the correct translation, mean we will be leaving before the Antichrist is revealed. Can you imagine if we're here when he publicly strengthens that agreement with many and brings everyone together and all of us spirit-filled, true believers go, Hey, Antichrist is Mohammed bin Salman or Antichrist is Obama or Antichrist is Macron, Trump, whoever you want. Oh, look at this guy. He's the Antichrist because it's going to be that simple. They can't have that on their side of this game at all it's not how it's going to work so not to take my word for it i want to read you this and i've just highlighted a couple of things on this this is the liberty university academic document put together by big brains right archive from may 2009 the rapture in 2 thessalonians 2 verse 3 on the pre-trib research okay here we go recommended and this is additional works that you can go find this is from thomas d ice archives 82 from 2009 let's drill into the important bits so he says here the greek noun apostasia usually translated apostasy is a reference to the rapture and should be translated departure thus the passage would be saying that the day of the lord will not come until the rapture comes before it so if i go back to this verse that i've got here let no man deceive you by any means he was encouraging them because people had told them that it had already passed and they were now in the tribulation they were pre-tribbers that day shall not come except there come a departure first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition right the greek noun apostasia is only used twice in the new testament in addition to 2 thessalonians 2 verse 3 it occurs in acts 21 verse 21 where speaking of paul it is said you are teaching the Jews who are among the Gentiles to apostasia Moses. Right? The word in Greek is apo from and istemi stand. Thus, the core meaning is away from or departure. The Liddell and Scott Greek lexicon defines apostasia first as a defection and a revolt. Secondly, as a departure or a disappearance. Gordon Lewis explains how the verb from which the noun apostasia is derived supports the basic meaning of departure. The verb means to remove spatially. There is little reason then to deny that the noun can mean such a spatial removal or departure. 
since the noun is used only one other time in the New Testament of apostasy from Moses. Acts 21 verse 21. We can hardly conclude that the biblical meaning is necessarily determined. The verb is used 15 times in the New Testament. Of these 15, only three have anything to do with departure from the faith. Luke 8.13, 1 Timothy 4.1, and Hebrews 3 verse 12. The word is used for departing from iniquity, 2 Timothy 2.19, from ungodly men, 1 Timothy 6 verse 5, and from the temple, Luke 2.27, from the body, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 8, and from persons, Acts 12.10 and Luke 4.13. <laughs> It is full of assurance of proper exegetical study and with complete confidence in the original languages, concluding Daniel Davy, that the word meaning of apostasia is defined as departure. Paul Lee Tan adds the following. What precisely does Paul mean when he says the falling away must come before the tribulation? The definitive article, the denotes that this will be a definitive event, an event distinct from the appearance of the man of sin. The Greek word for falling away taken by itself does not mean religious apostasy or defection. Neither does the word to fall, as the Greeks have another word for that. The best translation of the word is to depart. The Apostle Paul refers here to a definitive event which he calls the departure, which will occur before the start of the tribulation, and that is the rapture of the church. I could stop there, but again, for those who wish to argue it deeper and further, let's continue. So the word has a core meaning of departure and it depends upon the context to determine whether it is used to mean physical departure or abstract departure, such as a departure from the faith. The first seven English translations of apostasia all rendered the noun as either departure or departing. The Wycliffe Bible, the Tyndale Bible, the Coverdale Bible, the Cranmer Bible, the Breaches Bible, the Beza Bible, the Geneva Bible, they all, from 1384 all the way through to 1608, support the notion that the word truly means departure. In fact, Jerome's Latin translation known as the Vulgate from around the time of AD 400 renders apostasia with the word decessio, meaning departure. Theodore Beza, a Swiss reformer, was the first to transliterate apostasia and create a new word rather than translate it as the others had done. The translators of the King James Version were thus the first to introduce the new rendering of apostasia as falling away. So they created a new word and they did it in the King James Bible. Before that, they were translating departure. No good reason was ever given for departing from the translation as departure. It is important to note that Paul uses the definitive article with the noun. Since the Greek language does not need an article to make the noun definite, it becomes clear that the usage of the article referenced is being made to something in particular. In 2 Thessalonians 2.3, the word apostasia is prefaced by the definitive article, which means that Paul is pointing to a particular type of departure known to the Thessalonica church. Dr. Lewis provides the likely answer when he notes the definitive article serves to make the word distinct and draw attention to it. In this instance, he believes the purpose is to denote a previous reference. The departure Paul previously referred to was our being gathered to him, verse 1. Our being caught up with the Lord and the rapture dead in the clouds, 1 Thessalonians 4.17.
the departure was something that Paul and his re readers clearly had a mutual understanding on. Paul says in verse 5, Do not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you these things? The use of the definitive article would support the notion that Paul spoke of a clear, discernible event. The New Testament teaches that apostasy had already arrived in the first century. Acts 20, 27 to 32, 1 Timothy 4, verse 1 to 5, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 9, 2 Peter 2, verse 1 to 3, Jude 3 to 4, 17 to 21, and so on. The process would not denote a clear event as commanded by the language in this passage. When we examine Paul's first lesson to the Thessalonians, he never mentions the doctrine of apostasy. However, virtually every single chapter in that epistle speaks to the rapture. 1 verse 9 to 10, 2 verse 19, 3 verse 13, 4 verse 13 to 17, 5 verse 1 to 11. In these passages, Paul has used a variety of Greek terms to describe the rapture. He seemed to have been obsessed with the rapture. It should not be surprising that he uses another term to reference the rapture in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3. The Thessalonians had been led astray by false teaching, 2 verse 2 to 3, that the day of the Lord had already come. And they were stressed about that. I wonder if you've noticed the striking parallel between this verse and verse 7 and 8. Right? Further down. According to your suggestion, verse 3 mentions the departure of the church as coming first, and then tells of the revealing of the man of sin. And in verses 7 and 8, we find the identical sequence. Verse 7 tells of the removal of the church. Verse 8 says, And then shall that wicked be revealed. Same timing, same process, same story. Just a little bit further down. Scripture to Scripture. Kenneth Woost, a Greek scholar from Moody Bible Institute, adds the following contextual support for taking apostasia as a physical departure. But then he, apostasia, of which Paul is speaking, precedes the revelation of Antichrist in his true identity and is to katechon, which is hold back his revelation. 2 verse 6. The he apostasia, therefore, cannot be either a general apostasy in Christendom, which does precede the coming of Antichrist, nor can it be a particular apostasy, which is the result of his activities in making himself the alone object of worship. That's three and a half years in. Furthermore, that which holds back his revelation, verse 3, is vitally connected with who katechun, verse 7, he who holds back the same event. The latter is, in my opinion, the Holy Spirit and his activity in the church. All of which means that I'm driven to the inescapable conclusion that the he apostasia in verse 3 refers to the rapture of the church which precedes the day of the Lord and holds back the revelation of the man of sin who ushers in the world aspect of that period, that tribulation time frame. Paul teaches in 2 Thessalonians 2, the rapture will occur first, before the day of the Lord commences. It is not until after the beginning of the day of the Lord that the Antichrist is released, resulting in the events described by him in chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians. This is the only interpretation that provides hope for a discomforted people. So, to end with, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a departure first a disappearance, and then that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So do not be dismayed. 
though he tarry. There shall be a pre-tribulation rapture, and he will come and fetch his bride. Surely, for that blessed hope has given to us by him who is faithful and true and longs to be reunited with his bride. God bless. Keep looking up and keep listening for the sound of that trump. Shalom.